whitewater kayaking. We jump on angry, swollen rivers, and we ride them for a few moments as they hammer their way to the coast. Oftentimes, the task at hand doesn't leave much room for thought. Getting back on that water after it slows down provides a powerful experience you won't find in the mountains. We'll take on the back So one thing to always be looking for in a River Kings video is the stacking of the boats on the trailer. Uh, there's definitely a science to this. As you can see, the early bird gets the worm. If you see the lower boats on the trailer, those were the people that were here on time and first. And if the uh, subsequent boats, you know, the higher you get on the trailer, the later you are arriving to the River King World Headquarters to start the trip. Um, not saying that Dirt Dauber and Kevin are late, but they're 12 minutes late. There they are, surviving the 45 minute diesel pump. <laughs> yeah, that thing was slow. Don't worry. It was slow. What's up, brother? Arthur, how are you? Good to see you. We were all in good spirits, but there was definitely an edge to the morning. Our original mission was to paddle the entire Yadkin River in three days. What we didn't plan for is a monumental rain event that flooded the entire southeast. The only river within a 10 hours drive that wasn't affected by the rain was the Cape Fear. So late last night, we shifted plans, set up a shuttle, and set our sights on the Cape Fear from Irwin to the battleship. However, Mother Nature didn't like that plan either. In a pocket of rain formed that wasn't projected and sat on the Cape Fear drainage. We were on the road executing a plan that wasn't gonna work. We all knew it, but no one wanted to say it. All right, folks, so here's the deal. We're kind of reevaluating everything, seeing the water levels uh, as they're coming in and every creek we pass here is um, mm -hmm. at its banks or just, just, just about to be out of its mm -hmm. banks. When, when the creeks are out of the banks, the river gets that way too. So river's going up. We have the lake to reset the Hall River drainage, but the other half of this is the deep river. So um, it's going up as well. We're thinking about maybe shifting to an island paddle down there at the coast. Um, it's either gonna be like a lake paddle or island paddle because this was the last river drainage in the area that, that wasn't affected by this rain. And uh, it was fine until like, though just the bucket started dumping uh, a lot more than they predicted last night and it rained hard. So, half a mile. Continue straight to stay on so now we're like trying to figure out what to do. So try and be smart. Uh, it's another worse than calling a trip. Well, there is actually. <laughs> Go on, watch this video. <laughs> going, going on a trip in your shoe. I'm not sure what we all wanted. Maybe to see the river plateau. Maybe we just wanted to see the sun come out. But the truth of the matter is that it was still raining and the rivers were going up astronomically. The inevitable decision lay in front of us. Yet we decided to put it off until we reached Irwin and met up with our shuttle driver. Lloyd and his father had come up from Wilmington to meet us. 
They were going to drive our truck down and park it where we could retrieve it later. But wisdom prevailed. We simply paid Lloyd and thanked him for helping out and then called the trip off. And now with no rivers available to run and with no trip planned, we were back to the drawing board. On the upside, we had four boats, four friends, and four days to fill. Well, we are in Wilmington. And uh, early, early. Yeah, yeah we, we made the trip in like two hours. Um, a lot of water. So what we're thinking now is we've cobbled together uh, about three or four days of basically island hopping out here. Uh, we're gonna start up on uh, the Northwest Cape Fear River and kind of back in the swamp there and try to find a space to hopefully camp tonight. And then uh, come out and then we're coming down to an island uh, just past Wilmington. And then we have uh, a couple of ideas, but we may head to another island we got our eyes on and kind of slide up in there uh, should be good and then on the last day we're going to kind of try to slide up maybe do some coastal kayaking up the coast uh, around wrightsville beach area there and um then duck in to the intercoastal waterway and head to uh the marina where our truck will be parked so uh, i've paddled some of the swamps before it's been quite some time uh since i've done any real kayaking down in here so uh, it's just different. You got tides, you have the swamp itself. And Kevin and uh, Dirt Dauber, how you feeling? I'm good, I'm good, man. I'm tired. <laughs> Only slept two hours last night, I'm tired. But sure, we're good. Great. Yeah, you know I'm, drive down? I'm interested yeah. to see like how to much this plan changes because oh, we, yeah. we came up with this plan sitting in the back of Kevin's truck. Yeah, with, uh, with limited cell rece reception. Yeah. Yeah, going through uh, Eastern North Carolina. So uh, they act like they're Lewis and Clark or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have Nancy. And, <laughs> we got like, Nancy and Drew up the nautical front. charts. And just, <laughs> He's calling me Lewis and Clark, making fun of me. But I got like oh, that's a compliment, Mister Baina over which here. Was and, the short guy. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis was the short guy. Size six. Baina. Clark was a big redhead. <laughs> this is y'all are Lewis and Clark. <laughs> Oh God. Things are looking up. We are here in uh, in Wilmington, about to eat at the Keg and Egg. It looks kind of like like this trip might just be all right. Maybe we're gonna just get on the Intercoastal Waterway and 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 uh, burger joint hop or something. It doesn't sound too bad. Uh, Austin's brother Joe is helping us out now that we're down here in his neighborhood. He's gonna help us uh, launch and then park our truck down here at the boat ramp where we'll paddle back to it on Saturday. So for now, we just gotta figure out which hamburger to eat. Austin and I are twinning with uh, Cubans. Kevin is digging into the club. How is it? World's best club? Eight. Eight. And uh, Dirt Dauber, look at that. Yeah. Eating like an adult with the salad. That's what I'm talking about. Let's try this Cuban out. Oh yeah, it was good. All right, so lunch was amazing, and we have the world's best waitress here, the keg and egg, Kristen. And uh, if you're coming by Wilmington, come by, give these folks a look, and uh, she'll take care of you. Anything you want to say? Yeah. Nope. She's fantastic. <laughs> this is it. This is where the trip begins. Well, we're gonna get on and go left, and hopefully we'll find a place to camp tonight. <laughs> let's see what let's see what Swamp Kings is all about. You're not gonna do that, Jimmy. I would never film dirt bobber. Uh, experiencing the drawbacks to not trial fitting a new boat before the trip. Oh man, that's tight. The trouble he's having, and uh, this is your pro tip, if you're looking into getting into these kind of things, is the deck height at that hatch is probably six inches um, from the bottom of the boat to the top of the boat. And he gets a little bigger here, but he's having trouble getting bags in there. And uh, this will be a big advantage to him when he gets on big water especially in high wind he won't weather cock and some other things as much but for packing a lot of gear for a trip that's a challenge you can see he's he's got more stuff out of his boat than in his boat right now the prion grizzly i have extra space i could probably fit half of someone else's gear in this one but uh <laughs> right before launch the sun popped out 
It felt good to have a plan. It felt good to be loading the boats. All right, folks, we are here at Castle Hain Boat Ramp. North Joe, appreciate your help, man. He's oh, on. yeah. The boat's going into the water. The moment we've all been waiting for. The disappointment of having Mother Nature cancel not one, but two trips in the space of 12 hours was short-lived. Four friends, four boats, and four days. It was an unexpected and newfound freedom. All we had to do is decide where we wanted to explore. While knowing virtually nothing of the area may seem a disadvantage, it only heightened the senses in the anticipation of what we might find. The water was making its way to the coast, and so were we. With each paddle stroke, you could feel the world falling off your shoulders, and the call of this simple adventure brought peace. It was a majestic afternoon on the water, and I couldn't help but feel that this is where we were supposed to be the whole time. All right, so coming down the river, we were looking for basically pine trees or oaks, uh, especially pine trees, they're easy to spot, especially in the winter. That gives you an idea that there's high ground and you don't want just a few pine trees along the bank. You're gonna want a grove of pine trees that, that stretches inland just a little bit off the river. Um, and you'll find that a lot of times in hard bends in a swamp, because uh, over the time in the bends where silt and uh, debris and whatever is deposited turns into soil. It kind of mounds up there, you get trees. So uh, outside bends and sharp bends, a lot of times there's a lot of uh, just great options. Inside bends on shoaly rocky rivers in the mountains is where you have the low beaches. So that's good exit. Swamp's a little different. You're kind of looking for the opposite. Outside bends, a lot of ground. So uh, you can't really beat what we found here. Just enough for some hammocks. Preview of the sunset. Oh yeah, life is good on night one. Little shout out to my buddy, Adam Hale, who makes this uh, tactical gear himself. And he sent me this and uh, a few others a couple months back. When I first saw it, I thought it's a tactical pencil pouch. But wouldn't you know it, it's perfect because I've been looking for a way to organize all my tent stakes while on the trips. 
and uh, I've had some other bags and stuff that just wasn't what I needed. This is extra thick, it's double lined, so it protects uh, the other gear, the dry bags and whatnot from the stakes themselves, the sharp corners that you get sometimes. So thank you, Adam. It's perfect, I appreciate it, man. Camp is getting set up nicely. Ideal little spot. Um, really doesn't get any better than a swamp. Uh, about to start charging, about to cook dinner, and I was eating a snack, and I just wanted to give a quick shout out to one of my trip sponsors for this trip, which is uh, Blue Nest Beef. They sent me the Baba Links, and they are amazing. So I've been passing them around, and we're just uh, chomping down these guys. Mmm, grass-fed beef, so good. If you want some Baba Links, link in the description. Give it a look. beautiful morning a little cooler today but that's good it feels better in the dry suit yesterday was actually a little too warm um, but with the water temps uh, getting in and out of the boat sometimes around here is uh, you're gonna get a little wet so you want the dry suit on the plan sort of we're kind of winging this whole thing but uh, we've probably got about I want to say about 12 to 13 miles to the boardwalk in Wilmington and uh, if we can do that by lunch get out and get a burger uh whatever else and just kind of pout around that would be that would be what a river king would do and so we're kind of thinking maybe we can make that happen and then uh we're shooting for an island down below there about halfway from there down to the ocean so that's the plan today the island we're looking at is about 30 miles from here uh maybe a little more but it's somewhere right in the ballpark and uh we're excited so y'all ready here we are here in the valley by the riverside we have our peace we have our freedom if only for a time and we won't go on Know it well, the pain of a leaving, but this will raise the bar, and I will go with all I know to seek the sounds of our dreaming, and come what may, and come. Then I'm home again. To me, the 
morning of day two is always when the adventure begins. Day one is logistics and getting started, getting the boat packed, feeling like you left something at home, and then finding out what it is you left. But on day two, it's nothing but the river, your friends, and you. And our hopes were high. We were looking for some lunch in the Wilmington Boardwalk, and we had the promise of a paradise island. All we had to do is keep paddling. The quiet calm of the barren swamp is deceiving. It's full of life, and it's beautiful. Sounds of our dreaming And come what may And come what will Then I'm home As beautiful as it was, the going was pretty slow. We were learning about this river, trying to figure out the tides and the timing. It's an incredible amount of water that the ocean pushes in and out of these swamps. What it really meant for us is trying really hard and going really slow, or going really fast with little effort. In any case, we just had to keep going. After a few hours of paddling, we found the only high ground in the area and decided to get out and take a break. Not bad exit right there, to be honest with you. Yeah, remember this for next time. Ah, oh, Spanish moss, looks cool in here. Break time's over, time to get back on the water. The tide is still coming in, still have a headwind. Um, be interesting to see when all this turns around, so we're looking forward to that. Let's find out, we got about maybe five, six miles maybe down to uh, Wilmington. Hoping to make it to the boardwalk, uh, maybe get a burger if we can find a way out. Uh, if not, we'll just keep on trucking. At some point when we get down that way, we're gonna be with the tide and we're gonna be rolling down through there so 
Time to climb back in the boat and make our way down river. All right, it is 13.01 and we, we have our glide back. So I think the water's neutral in between the tides and it's about to start going out. So that gives it about two and a half hour swag at about a 40 mile inland on the river, if I'm doing my math right. Um, just important information that might help you someday. So high tide at the beach was 1023. Seems like high tide here may have been about one. And I think it's about to all start heading in the same direction with this. And actually we may be turning this corner into a following wind as well. So we've been slogging it out, fighting this tide up this river at about like two, two and a half miles an hour. And um, I'm thinking we're gonna be moving like seven or so in just a few minutes when all this starts going back out to sea. So we're ready. We're tired of the slog. We're ready to start feeling the wind in our hair again. Uh, except not wind that's just blowing in our faces. Wind because we're going so fast. We had been fighting the tide from the get-go. It had only enhanced the distance between wanting to get where we're going and not wanting to leave the beauty and the remoteness of the swamp. But we were in fact leaving the swamp behind and entering the coastal marsh and civilization. All right, we are um, into our first neighborhood here, coming into Wilmington. So basically we'll kind of like do a little right then a left turn and we'll kind of be getting into uh, Wilmington proper. Um, Battleship's not too far ahead. We're gonna see if we can find a place to eat lunch here. Uh, getting out at the boardwalk might be problematic. That's gonna be the great mystery. We're hoping for like the yuppie dock. If they knew the kings were coming, um, and uh, they would probably have had that installed, but we didn't have much time to give them warning, so we'll let it slide this time, Wilmington. But next time I come through here, I need a kayak dock at the boardwalk so I can go buy your stuff eat your food. It is a neat thing to kayak under a bridge you know well, but have never been there on the water. Up ahead, I see the skyline of Wilmington. Might not be coming through on the, uh, on the screen there, but we can see the buildings and stuff. We're getting closer. See the big shipyard cranes. Some of them anyway. Next stop, the battleship. Paddling water, buddy. Paddling water. <laughs> Eats it up. Look at them boys. Yeah, Kev. Yeah, that's a four-foot seas. Say goodbye to your trees. We've made it. Hey, we can get our uh nine point four. What'd you get? Ooh, close. What'd you get? Oh, that's 
it's awesome. Folks, the sun came out. We just did the back side of the boardwalk. So we found this little beach here. And uh, I'm not sure how, um, I don't know if we're actually supposed to be here, but we're here, so we're gonna try to climb on out and get to the boardwalk. And so uh, we're gonna do an expeditious, uh, surreptitious, um, a stealthy zip right up to the boardwalk uh, without uh, alerting too much people to our uh, efforts and then back here and beat feet we got a lot of good current here make it as far down this river as we can after that so probably be a really quick stop but it'll be good food and a good stop all right folks so we, we are we're here uh we'll see what we can find i saw some stuff up the way all right folks we're walking around lost down here and kathy has helped us out we're heading for pizza so we appreciate it no problem and what's the name of the place i love new york pizza i love new york pizza here we come <laughs> Austin, I hope you love pizza. Thank you again. You're welcome. Yeah. People are always helping you out. All right, folks, right behind me. I love New York pizza. Uh, it's going to be what's for dinner tonight here on the boardwalk in Wilmington. We're going to grab this pizza, run back down to the boats, smash the pizza, jump back into boats, and then ride this current down to, to the island. I think Joe's going to meet us there tonight, Austin's brother, camp with us. And uh, hopefully, I have a feeling he might have a fire going for us when we get there. That'll be a nice housewarming gift. We could have had ramen bowls, bro. Ramen bowls? That would have been good. Ramen and poke? You got some options here. Every restaurant, every building is a restaurant. We were just looking for something fast, so hopefully this will work. Should be coming out any minute. Mmm, pizza's about to come out of the oven. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. That's what's for dinner, boys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of pizza. All right, walking back to the boats. Oh, it's so good. Mmm. That's a good piece of pizza. Back with our boats, and uh, it's a pretty darn good pizza. Oh, 10 out of 10. Yeah. Now, it's gonna be a River King night. I think we'll be on the water at dark. But we got lights. We'll hug the right bank, get down to our island. Joe will be there waiting for us. It's going to be a good day. Mmm, such good pizza. Wilmington in the rearview mirror got our island ahead of us as it turns out uh, there was a kayak launch at the very end if we had just gone a little further we'd have seen it and uh, all the junk I was talking to Wilmington about not having a kayak launch there uh, for the boardwalk I have to take it back it looks like there is one I uh, just didn't know where it was so anyway yes there is a kayak launch we did not know where it is it all worked out we got a beautiful clearing sky. It's partly cloudy, but this sunset over here is, uh, man, it's nice to get to camp early, but it's hard not to enjoy a sunset like that. That is just fabulous. Now just enjoy the evening, enjoy the flow. Look for our island.
Several miles of river separated us from the island. It was apparent we were not going to get there before dark. And looking back, we wouldn't have had it any other way. Maybe it was the sunset. Maybe it was the relaxing pool of the river heading to the ocean. Or maybe it was knowing that Joe would be there on the island with a fire for us. We were not in a hurry, but rather, we had the whole river to ourselves, And it was impossible not to enjoy. It's officially a River King trip. Did y'all expect anything less? All right, folks, so we are kind of dead middle of the channel right now, making our crossing kind of at a, a diagonal across the channel to get on the right side of the channel. Our island is in sight. We feel pretty sure we saw the fire before we had to cross the channel. And dead ahead of us, I know you can't see it, but dead ahead of us is our island. 
if you can see the red light that's the left point of the island and the white blinking lights is the right point of the island so as we come through here we'll start heading for that left side and then look for the fire light. and we can see the glow from Joe's fire oh yeah we're probably within five minutes of putting boat on sand and getting out of this thing we've been in the boat for a while that was a day of paddling right there it was <laughs> oh man we have finally arrived folks home for the night oh yeah going burrito shack some chips. got some chips good to see you joe we're here on this island there's a phenomenon where you see all this sand is only here because the big cargo ships wash all the uh everything away last time austin was here and joe uh they almost lost all their stuff it just kind of washed all over the island so yeah, and we have the MSC Texas coming in. It's a large container ship. And we fear we, we may be in, uh, in danger of losing our fire here on the beach. It's a wonderful fire. And uh, like I said before, this sand here is only sand because these ships wash all the debris out when they come through. She's chugging and she's, she's extra large, boys. That's a lot bigger than the last one. That's like twice the boat. <laughs> the last boat was big. This one is really big. Look at that boat, folks. Bringing in a whole load of Vienna sausages for Davy County. It's going to fill up every Walmart and food line on the East Coast. I thought it was 100 yards long. All right, take it as the water. Leave. Yep, look at the water, guys. Look at the water going. It's like a tsunami. You know how they say the tsunami goes, yeah. sucks all the water out first? Right there, look at it. You probably walk out to the walk out there. <laughs> walk out there, dirty. Yeah, I'll walk out there. How fast can you run back? Oh, it's she, coming she back. Coming it's back. coming back. No, no, you gotta coming come back. on back. It's coming back. It's coming, it's coming back. back quick. Oh, here she comes. Oh, look. Well, oh, that's a lot of water. Nah, oh, that ain't a lot right there. That's just disappointing.
just enjoying a, one of the best sunrises I've seen on probably the most relaxing island site I've ever been on. Um, it's just a, a little oasis here uh, in the middle of the river. Pretty cool. I know we got in late last night, but this is the campsite. Look at that. I mean, are you kidding? Kevin over there doing camera stuff. This nice sandy beach. Sunrise under the Spanish moss. Joe, you did well. I did my best, Pete. Show you where I was camped last night. Oh, this one right here might kind of spoil you. I don't know if we're going to be able to do better than this one. This is my site. The sand does not stick to your feet either. Um, quick dust off and it's gone. So that's good. But yeah. War bonnet. UGQ quilts. UGQ winter dream tarp. Got the boat. I've been digging around in a little bit this morning. But I had it all battened down and sealed up. And tied off in case we got washed. Joe was right here. Austin and Dirt Dauber are back there in the back, but I think they're still sleeping. Kevin right here. But I mean, wow, what a beautiful campsite. Can we beat it tonight? That's the question. I'm not sure. It's going to be a different kind of campsite. Tonight we're going to be back in an island, uh, up a creek. It's going to be really cool. Um, never been to that one either, but I have another friend, um, very close who, who does this, uh, quite often and he said it's legit. So I'm looking for it. It's going to be awesome. <sighs> Beef stew. It's what's for breakfast. It's my favorite right now. I'm not sure how that came to be. It was the breakfast, breakfast skillet for a, a long time. Kevin, I think likes biscuits and gravy. Austin's probably got some homemade granola. Tonight, or no, this morning, sorry. No coffee yet. <laughs> I'm gonna try Peak Refuels Biscuits and Gravy, which I am told is the best biscuits and gravy. I have not tried this either, so yeah, we'll be interested to see how Austin enjoys that. I need to try more Peak. I haven't gotten into that very much, and uh, everyone's talking about it, so I'm gonna give Peak a try coming forward. So the plan for the day is, tentatively, like it's just staring at the water makes me wanna start paddling. But the tide's gonna be coming in till around 11 here. Then we'll have that little slack tide. Then it's rolling out to sea and we're heading down river. So we're probably gonna wait till a little later to get started today, kind of a, a rare late morning, just so we don't fight the tide. We've got, got a lot of miles again to make today, but not quite as much as yesterday. I think if we wait for the tide to change, I think we'll be all right. But uh, we'll see. Joe's got to roll out of here a little earlier. He's got uh, some stuff he has to take care of today. Yeah, it's actually a weekday. So yeah, it's a weekday. <laughs> a lot of lives. Uh, we're so uh, it's awesome he came up and joined us. But yeah, that's what we got going on. Just uh, life in camp, and it doesn't get much better than this, folks. Island camping. It's it's perfect. Morning, Dirt Dauber. Morning. How are you? Good. Good to see you. You look, uh, <laughs> you look stylish. <laughs> look at this outfit. That's what I'm talking about. How you feel today? Good. Oh, yeah. I got Austin working his magic over here.
fabulous day. We are breaking it all down. Um, tide's still coming in. The wind's picked up a considerable amount. Unfortunately, it's coming from the wrong direction. <laughs> Excellent! Um, clouds are kind of rolling in a little bit, which is fine. It's still a beautiful day. But we are kind of in the last little bits of cleaning up camp, letting the tarp dry just a little more. It was pretty wet this morning. Um, pretty much everything's packed up except the tarp. I just got to organize it into the boat. And then uh, we'll be ready to shove off. Uh, feels like about 10.30. I'm not sure what time it is. 10.30 on the dot. <sighs> I don't think I can wait to the full, full tide. I just, I get impatient. We'll just have to slip in there and just start poking our way down through the islands. Uh, it's gonna be good. In any case, let me pack this thing up and then we'll get going. This one's coming over. It's close. That's a big one. Here come to wake. We might be okay. <laughs> oh, we almost got packed up. We had a big one come by. Yeah, that one came up a little bit over here. Still coming. Man, look at that. Oh, that one's way bigger. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be bad. I've got to get my paddle in a tree somewhere. Get ready to Katie bar the door. We are just doing our last police call, making sure we're leaving it better than we found it. Uh, making sure we're not leaving ridge lines on trees and things like that. Not that any of us would leave a ridge line on a tree. No, that's impossible. What, what are you tying up there? Ridge Just line. some rope you found here. <laughs> <laughs> Austin saved him. Uh, it's so easy to do, folks. I've done it before several times. Get your ridge line off the tree. Make sure you got it. Uh, saying goodbye to a wonderful little island camp. The best island camp I've ever partaken of. And uh, about to shove off into the headwinds and soon to be changing tide. Um, it looks so good this morning. Starting to think maybe we should have shoved off early, but hey, we had a plan, let's work it. That's right. So yeah. That's true, we, that would have been a thing. I'm about to, uh, I'm just gonna push off right here where my camp was. Straight in the water, it's a lot less drag. Plenty of space to launch over there. But uh, here's to a day three Hopefully another fantastic day. And we have a camp we're looking for today. And I think it's gonna be perfect as well. A little bit different, more secluded, more stealthy, but it's gonna be fun. Well, that was our plan. But as a theme to the trip, Mother Nature would change our plans yet again. We all felt somewhat lazy and regretful that we didn't use the morning to make more miles. But paddling against the incoming tide would have yielded limited results. Choosing to wait till almost lunch before we started paddling 
would prove to be a blessing in disguise. It was a beautiful day, but like a beautiful song with a bad note here and there, I could sense the first pangs of change, both in the weather and subsequently our plan. There was just something off. We ducked in out of the wind behind this island to reevaluate and batten down the hatches. It was clear things were worsening and we needed to prepare. on the island just do a quick reset the tide is definitely with us now and it's pumping pretty fast um, wind is about 20 25 it's becoming a fun day <laughs> Our original plan for the day was to continue paddling several more miles down the right-hand side of the river. And there we would have the narrowest open water crossing at one mile. Where we're sitting now, the channel is almost two miles wide. But with conditions worsening, I started to feel like the play may be to go ahead and make it to the left bank. At our current location, with winds coming straight out of the west, a swim event would push us further into open water and the shipping channel. If we could make it over to the left bank, a swim event would simply push us into the shore. And if that wasn't a good enough reason, our only way to get out of these conditions is to duck into the intercoastal waterway. And to do that, we have to make it to Snow's Cut, which is rapidly approaching on the left bank. It started to become clear to me that we needed to cross now. Two things were for certain. Our situation was deteriorating by the minute. And if the guys didn't like it now, they're really not gonna like things the closer we get to the ocean. Hey Austin, the other option is to bust across now. The thing that we had put off in our minds to do later that was looking to become harder and harder was now staring us right in the eyes. And to set the tone, 
in even a worse way. A big swell from a passing freighter created some confused water and gave Austin a little extra adventure. Whoa, Austin! We put the guys on edge and it was go time. As first-time sea kayakers in sporty weather, the guys had a couple things to work out. Namely, with 30 mile an hour plus winds, the boats now were trying to weathercock into the wind. The stern was pushing to the left, causing them to turn right. But we desperately needed to start heading left. It would be a battle we fought for the next couple of miles. We turned a two mile channel crossing into four. to go straight across. Well, I, I was afraid of my little waves, man. <laughs> I was like, left, you're like, I was like, he's doing it, we're following him. We did the whole diagonal channel cross at a quarter C, like, like probably the hardest way. I was committed. When you went out like three strokes and that wake hit you, you were like, I was like, Austin. <laughs> Long periods of wind did not lend itself to things getting easier. So let's, let's go ahead and bust it now. That was fun. I say we kind of like head for the, just to the right of that blue roof. We'll be we'll be getting more buffering over here, but we'll be uh, the capsize will be an instant wash into the bank versus a swim across a two-mile channel. <laughs> 
So I was like, I was thinking when I said we could go left now, I was like, we got this win. And we'll be over there in like six minutes. And then you were like, oh, it's like, oh, on the other left, we're in the channel. <laughs> yeah, wait, and I was like, oh. yeah. Uh, you're like, hold up. I'm like, I no, can't. I'm saying go left. Well, yeah, I heard you say oh. go left. I'm like, I'm there. <laughs> the east side of the island gave us a chance to get our life back together and reset for the final push. We still had about a half a mile of open water to be in range of the shore. The crew had just had their first little taste with the incredible exposure that you feel when paddling on big water. We weren't quite out of the woods yet and the guys knew it. In a desperate attempt not to go right out into the big water again, they overcompensated and went too far left. It really didn't matter though. It was a good experience. And as far as their paddling was going, they were all doing just fine. The angst was all in their mind. When big open water and bad conditions start to whisper doubt, it's hard to ignore that roar. The task at hand was simply to find a beach, get out, call my buddy Pat and get a surf report, and maybe reevaluate how we wanted to prosecute the next 24 hours. Just straight to that uh, dock. Maybe a little right. You're fine, just because that angle you got there, dirt number, hold that. Way too far left. Where's he? Where's he going? Austin! <laughs> yeah, go to the beach left. again the sea has become angry um, the guys aren't super comfortable and we're at a decision point we have to either make a decision right now to keep going where we're going or to alter the plans and enter the intercoastal waterway and that's what we're gonna do just to get out of this keep it all safe uh, when I saw the winds pick up heavy from the I guess the west um, I decided let's just go ahead and make the channel now because it's about to get crazy. And it did. Not ideal. So the pine trees in the distance is snow's cut. It leads to the intercoastal waterway. It is the beginning of the intercoastal waterway, this area. So we just got to get through there and then we'll be uh, in easy money. Everything will be a lot better. So I don't think we want to get any closer to the ocean today 
So uh, we're gonna make the call now to, to abandon our original plan uh, to look for spines out that way. We're gonna go up here close to the waterway where we'll be a little more controlled, so. She's cranking, boys. How do you feel? Way more intimidating than Baby Falls. Anything on Teleco, anything on Wilson, I've ever, I've ever put me on that right there. That, that was... Whew. How you feeling? Good times. Good times. How were you feeling five minutes ago? Ten minutes ago. So, it was a type two good time. <laughs> Where it's fun to talk about now, but it yeah, was yeah. not fun in the moment. Dirt Dauber, I think he held his breath for four miles. Yeah, it took, it, it took me about 15 minutes to figure out how to breathe, because I was holding my breath and <laughs> swelling away. I don't want to hear anybody throwing shade at sea kayakers. It's a real thing. So uh, anyone can paddle a lake when it's flat <laughs> and easy. But when it gets a little angry, um, yeah, it can be intimidating. They did well. Now take a minute, let things get really bad, then go around the corner and the snow's cut and then we'll be off on the races. That's a drastic change, isn't it? Yeah, that was the most intense part right there, was making that left hand turn. <laughs> All right, folks, we've made Snow's Cut uh, out of the rough. Just a little breeze back in here, so much, much, much better. So what uh, what we're looking at now is we're gonna go up here under the bridge. There's gonna be a, like a big um, cove or lagoon there on the right. And in the back side of there is a bunch of restaurants. And so, uh, seems like a River Kings thing to do that we would paddle to the back of that and then find something to eat because it is 1:30, and uh, And while we're eating we'll probably look at our phones and come up with our plan of where we're gonna camp tonight and uh, So we're just flying by the seat of our pants taking whatever conditions and you know what the day gives us so Just pretty much like floating vagabonds drifting through the channels around here looking for somewhere to sleep and eat It's kind of nice the crew did well. They're a little bit, uh, I think they're getting their adrenaline dump at the moment. We're a little rattled. I wouldn't say rattled, but there was a little white knuckling back there. I don't, I don't smoke, but I might need a cigarette. <laughs> in a few minutes, I think I'll get the feeling back in my fingers. <laughs> Dirt Dauber just took his second breath in the last two hours. <laughs> I don't drink, but I might need a drink. And man, no one's been talking for like two hours, but now everyone's laughing and smiling. That's what the boys are the boys are in their happy place now. 
but what a change to come into snow's cut just just all that just went away and uh yeah pretty day after all again All right, folks, we are here at Stoked at Carolina Beach. Uh, we've climbed out on this dock. Next step, we'll be getting back in, but it's just as easy. Just someone's gotta be the first one, and then after that, it's rock solid. So uh, heading up to see what Stokes is all about. So Stoked was short-staffed, and it was not looking promising. So we're taking the show on the road. We'll go down here to the taco joint and uh, try that out. So we found ourselves at Nolly's uh, Taco House and uh, we're smashing some quesadillas. Pretty good, Kevin's standing in the cold watching the boat right now, so uh, we got it to go. The island hopping life is a good life. All right, folks, there she is, the world's best waitress, Jess, taking care of us over here at Nolly's Taco House. Y'all gotta try it out, Carolina Beach. Uh, pretty cool vibe, and uh, we'll know all about these tacos here in a minute. I'm sure they're the world's best. Appreciate it. Come by and see the girls over here, they'll take care of you. Uh, right up here by the end of the little lagoon. So now on to find Kevin and get back on the water. <laughs> oh man, uh, quesadillas looking good. Now these quesadillas bootlegging on the back side of Stokes restaurant here. Mm -hmm. That's a good quesadilla. What do you think Kev? It's really good. It's getting a little brisk out. I think the wind's, the wind's just starting to feel brisk. We need to get back in the boat and get pumping. All right, dinner was fantastic. We're about to load back into the boats. I gotta go first. Once I get situated, uh, we're gonna get the rest of the guys in their boat one at a time. So uh, let's see how this goes. restaurant it's about 3 30. Um, we got about an hour an hour and a half before we need to be through the inlet up there and it's about three miles away so i think we'll be able to just coast up to it um, and then we got to make that inlet the tide's going out so we got to use this tide to get us to the inlet and we were trying to time it to get there at about slack tide where we can uh zip across and then the tide coming in will push us up the waterway. So you gotta use the tides as a river current and they reverse every six hours. And uh, you kinda need to make it halfway through. Like if you wanna come in from the south, you're going north and you gotta do that as the tide's coming in. You get to the break point and as the tide goes out, you ride that tide out to the next inlet and so forth and so on. So that's the plan and uh, we are heading now towards the inlet. That'll be the next exciting thing we do. Bellies are full, fantastic meal from Nolly's Taco House. Finally, the wind at our backs, the tide at our backs, the sun at our backs, and home somewhere up ahead. We're looking forward to it. Pretty afternoon.
over the night. Here we are chasing another sunset. Looking for a home for the night. Winging it. This is what you get. While we were trudging along under another beautiful sunset, I had two thoughts on my mind. Number one, I was so glad we had waited till lunch to start paddling. I fear if we had struck out early, we would have missed our opportunity to duck into Snow's Cut. It would have been caught out in the wind. And that led me to number two. Each day had changed so much it was almost like we had done four or five separate trips. And then just out of nowhere, came home for the night. Hoping for the best, we could definitely make this work. Camping allowed no more than two consecutive nights. This is home, boys, it always works out if you just keep paddling. folks. I don't know if that comes in well, but uh, we got it battened down pretty tight. Hopefully everything will hold till morning. We'll find out soon enough. Good morning, folks. It was a windy one last night, and uh, I will say I have never had, just on account of the wind and the humidity, I think, I've never had the, the disparity of comfort in the hammock to discomfort outside of the hammock as last night. It's, uh, it's probably almost eight. And I, usually I'm up about 6.30 on the camp, but I just don't want to get out of the hammock. And already standing here, I already want to be back in the hammock. But uh, it was whipping pretty much all night. It kind of laid down about three o'clock. But uh, that's the get up, that's what I'm using. Brought the wooby out again. That makes all the difference, keeping that cold air off your face. Dirt dauber's right back there, but unfortunately we had the wind coming straight off the water all night. There was no way to get around it. We've got Kevin and Austin hanging out over here. Uh, Kevin's getting up. Austin's uh, Austin's always the early bird. He's over there packing up already. But this morning, I think I'm gonna make some hot tea because that seems right. Something warm going down the pipe. So, uh, chamomile tea with honey. Here we go. Okay, this this is much, much better. I just went ahead and put the dry suit on over everything to stop that wind, because the wind just won't stop. I'm not as strong as Austin. Austin's over there in Long John's looking like a hero. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin's walking the uh, changing robe again, thinking about some dry suit. Dry suit's not warm when you first put it on. It's kind of like a, not a warm fabric, but it is a uh, phenomenal windbreak and all that stuff, so. Uh, once you get it on, it feels so much better. And uh, come on, stuff bunched up in here. I gotta fix that. But uh, really pretty morning. So we are about uh, halfway packed up. Uh, beef stew for breakfast again. Got my tea over there. It's good. Uh, the sun is gone. Clouds are back, and the wind's starting to pick up again. Kevin and Austin looking pretty organized. I'm always a little jealous of Austin's little food bag. Got his own custom food bag. Look at that. Side trail adventures. I need to do better. Be, Whew. Be do better, be better. The 
do better and be better. Yeah. Okay, Dark Sith. <laughs> the River Sith. Whew. We're just saying you're up and about. Kevin over here is taking the changing robe to new levels. I was like, what? He goes, it's the hood thing. He forgot his beanie. Yeah. His daughter bought him a beanie and he forgot yeah, it. I'm he sorry, like, He feels so bad. Yeah, I do. He was going to be so warm. Meanwhile, uh, I've been wearing two and my head's a little warm. Better save this one for later. Good. You need a beanie? What? Are you going to charge me 20 bucks for it? <laughs> that one's yours now. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I'll get it back. That one right there, you're already a better Man, kayaker. It's bigger than I thought. It's like already pre stretched. <laughs> you don't have enough. Yeah, we've got uh, the kids at school. They're tough on the lice. Uh, he doesn't have enough hair we think we're clean right now, but we're not sure. My head's been itching a little bit. Does your head itch all the time? Right here. It's been one of these kind of trips. We wouldn't have made it through except Austin was keeping our spirits up. Take it away. There once was a ship that put to sea, and the name of the ship was the Bully O.T. The wind blew up the bow, it dipped down, oh, blow, you bully boys, blow. <laughs> Soon may the wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. Soon may the wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done. We'll take our leave and go. The inescapable and relentless winds had brought in winter weather. No more lounging on the beach looking at sunrises. There was no sun, only gray, cold, and wind. Also present was the bittersweet backdrop of the last morning of a trip. It had been an amazing adventure, but one that was coming to a close. While part of us wishes we could stay out here forever, our focus started turning to families, responsibilities, and our life back home. So one more time, one last time, we got in our kayaks and pushed out into a sea of gray. And with the wind at our backs, we pushed north, looking for a truck. And we started thinking about finding one more hamburger. We all hated to see it end. A trip that only happened because everything we wanted to do was unavailable. A trip that only happened because four friends with four boats in four days kept the dream alive and made something out of nothing. The only thing that stayed the same on this trip was change. And wouldn't you know it, we're in store for one more change. As a parting gift, the Cape Fear gave us the sun back. Oh yeah, the end of a trip. Special thanks to Charlie from Outdoor Supply for the use of the boat for Dirt Dauber. Yeah, Made the trip. Yeah. And it handled, yeah, handled like a champ crossing the channel there. Good stuff. A little bit of a lower volume boat, uh, very responsive. If you're looking for one, is Charlie got this one for sale? Yeah, it's for sale. This boat's for sale at Outdoor Supply in Hickory. If you want the boat that Dirt Dauber paddled, go see Charlie.
there she is folks all loaded up packed up feeling good clean clothes what are we talking about um just turned out to be a beautiful day beautiful day to finish a trip We left the planning on lunch up to Austin and he has chosen PT's Grill. And uh, let's see what this is all about. PT's Grill in Wilmington. Dirt Dauber again with the salad. He's the only adult, but that's okay. The fries are fantastic. I tell you that, I tasted one a minute ago. Good fry. Uh oh. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> the fries are so good. Kevin got choked up. Mm, good. Emotionally good, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what I was looking for. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I just got the uh, old fashioned hamburger. Oh, yeah. Here we go. That's a good one. <laughs> Everybody's it's getting, getting, it's Everybody's so getting, Everybody's getting, that is fabulous. That is good. Mm. Made up perfect into the trip. Uh, turned out to be a pretty nice, bright, sunny winter day. A little chilly, but not too cold for the big Alaska ice cream bar. And a ride home. How's the big Alaska? Tastes like salmon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's ride. Back of the River King World. Back of the River King World. Oh, you ever think I make a blooper yeah, yeah. reel? Take six. I knew it. Back of the River King World headquarters. Awesome trip. Appreciate it. Some of these boys got to get home to go to work. I got to get home. Let me do that again. I'm not in uh, wide. I had a. I'm used to wide. All right. Take seven. Back at the River King World headquarters. I appreciate it, guys. Awesome. Another fabulous trip with the crew. For the guys that couldn't make it, we'll catch you on the next one. See you later. <laughs> Take eight. This trip's over. Right, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> what a change of plans. What an adventure. One day when I'm old and gray, I'm going to sit down in front of a sunset and I'm going to remember four friends with four boats in four days. <laughs>